Welcome. You are about to listen to a destiny changing message preached by Pastor David at Caris Phase 2. Caris Phase 2 is our revival seeking youth ministry where young people are coming to know Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Be blessed as you listen. When somebody is a Christian, who, who started it? It's, it's the, one of the biggest things to know as a Christian. It's a big thing to know that every good thing in our work with God starts from God. It's a major thing. If you know that, you are halfway through. So being a Christian does not start from you, even though you made the decision. It started from God because he inspired the decision in your heart. And so God plans and calls us and, and uses a preacher to preach the gospel so we can hear the gospel and come to God. Meanwhile, he is the one working on your heart. How many of you have ever been for outreach and you are talking to somebody and you are shocked the person's response because you didn't expect this? It's like the person was so receptive and it's like I'm looking for someone to talk or they break down crying and you are wondering, oh, oh, but what did I say? And you can tell, no, no, it's not you. Even though you sometimes meet some people who are also devils. You meet, you sometimes can meet about five devils and two people. One who will cry, the other one will say, oh, thank you for coming to talk to me. And so it's encouraging. But you meet five devils. And sometimes you miss the time himself. He's upset. Upset with you for just trying to help him. Yeah. But it's all part of um, the, what we are dealing with in presenting the gospel. So one of the things you should, you should, I want you to understand is that God planned it. He purposed that you be, you be saved. That's good news, right? And then he purposed to save you through the means through which he saved you. And then when it comes to the believer, as a, as a believer, you, one of the things we have to know is that we are God's possession. God's possession. We, God owns us. God owns us. So if you are born again, who owns you? God, God owns us. He, he said for... Um, uh, uh, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. A peculiar people that you that you may proclaim the praises of Him, King James. That you may show forth the show forth the praise of Him who has called us out of darkness into His. Marvelous. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, holy. We are a chosen generation, a peculiar people, God's own people. We are God's own people. In, in um, Acts chapter 20, verse 28, it seems like I quote the scripture alone. Take it to yourself and to the flock of God. Okay. So, it's which he has purchased with his own blood. When you purchase some, something, who owns it? The one who purchased it. All right. So if God purchased us with his own blood, that means God owns the church. No pastor owns the church. No pastor owns the people. God owns the people. We are God's own. So when you are a Christian, you must know that you belong. That's why you shouldn't be too much afraid of devils. And when someone is determined to fight you in life, they are fighting God's property. Some of you, you should put uh, in the realm of the spirit, you know it's on your, on your forehead. God's property is on you. You are God's own possession. Is that not good news? Yes. In fact, some put some 100 puts it this way. He said, we are the sheep of his pasture. He has pasture, but it's for the sheep. The things God has got to offer is for his people. That's why in Matthew chapter 15, when the woman the Syrophoenician woman. He came to Jesus from verse 26. My daughter lies sick. My daughter is sick. Sick. Can you hear? Jesus said, I can't take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. All right? So who are the children here? Who are the dogs? The children are the people of God. And when the people of God have their inheritance, they have their heritage. 
So my, my brother is called Entry. My children are called Entry. My wife is called Entry. My mother is called Entry. It's, it's a family inheritance. Yeah. I didn't have to pay for it. So the fact that I was born into that family entitles me to something. Mm. You, you used to live in Thames Mead because that's your father's house. Your mother and your, your parents have their house there. That's why you, you live there. And it's like you didn't have to beg somebody to help you to come and live there. But you were born there, born into it. Some of us are British because you are born like that. You didn't pay for it. Why, 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 the fact that your parents are British, why should you be a British? You apply, you should have interview. No, it's not necessary. Because there's something called in, life, in life called heritage or inheritance. In the same way, when you become a believer, you also are born into an inheritance. So Paul, one day he was praying for the church in Ephesians chapter 1. He said, uh, verse 14, Wherefore, also, when I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love unto all the saints, I do not cease to make mention, verse 16, please, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Wow. Ah, what's the prayer topic? Now let's look at the prayer topic. He was praying for people who were, who were walking in love and people who were in faith. They were walking in love and they were in faith. He said, I heard of your faith and I, uh, he said, well, uh, I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for who? All the saints. All the saints, the saints, not dead people, please. You can't love dead people. Saints means people who are born again. Yeah. They have been separated by God. They have been set apart by God. They are in the world, but they've been set apart from the world. And they are God's own possession. So God said, ah, you are mine. He said, sets you apart. Yeah, stand here. You are mine. Yeah, stand here. You are mine. And then puts you aside. He said, okay, no, just the two of you are mine. So the rest are there, but this is chosen. Chosen. Like uh, your mom goes to do maybe some shopping. So I said, okay, you can have everything, but leave this one for me. Don't touch this one. I bought it for myself. Yeah. You know, I reserve it for, do you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, maybe she's cooking some dishes or something. Your dad is doing something. They said, no, leave this for me. I reserve it for myself. Like, you can't come and just get that because there's no seat. And you come and sit here. No, it's the, it look, the seats look the same. But the location makes it a special seat. Yes. So, uh, that is, this is reserved. It's part of the seats. But that one is separated. So, when you are a saint, when you are a believer, God has reserved you for himself. God has separated you for himself. So it doesn't matter who doesn't like you. Bible said, oh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, you are accepted in the beloved. Mm. Wow. When it comes to the people who are specially loved, he said, you have now been accepted amongst them. Wow. Wow. Ephesians chapter verse 6, sorry. He said, accepted. Wherein he has made us accepted. Hey. God has made you accepted. Maybe you say, you think your dad doesn't like you. Once you know God likes you, God and your dad, who is better? God and your ex, who is better? Hey, change your approach to life because you have been accepted in the beloved. When God is, God is, is counting the people he specially loves, those he has set his love upon, he asks you, what? In spite of your past, and the devil is very upset. Why should God add you? The bad things you have done. God said, you can talk. The, the hand, talk to the hand. The ear is not listening. I still, I've still chosen her. She's still mine. He's still mine. Hallelujah! <laughs> Accepted in the beloved. So when Paul said, we, since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for the, all the saints... I do not cease to make, make, give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Look, your pastor is thanking God for your life. Is that not a blessing? Yes. Thanking God for your life. You, because of your, the, the kind of faith you're walking in, the kind of love you're walking in, you are not contending, contending and contentious with people in church. Because if you have faith in Jesus Christ, it, should, it will show. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, it will show in the way you treat people who even offend you in church. Yeah. Some people are full of offense. Wow. I'm offended. I didn't like the way he spoke to me. And he keeps doing that. Yes, that's human beings now. It's family. People. How many of you have been offended by a family member before? 
your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousin. Yeah. Your aunties. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Please, please, please. Please. Please, some aunties are so wonderful. Aunties. There are some aunties, they are so loved. Others, oh, no. But we all have people in our families that upset us. But you don't say they are normal, my family members. In the same way, church, just since I said of your love for the saints, I did not cease to give thanks. You know, I normally read it like this. I did not cease to give a prayer for you. No, it didn't say pray for you. Give thanks for you. Give thanks for you, and then I've, I've been mentioning you in my prayers. I've been mentioning you in my prayers. Okay, so now let's look at the prayer topic. He was praying for people who love Jesus, who love the saints and have faith in Jesus. He said, that was the prayer topic, that the God of the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to share, mention it this morning, but since I'm mentioning it, I'll tell you. Because in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, he said, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Oh, come on. Let's all read it out loud. Let's go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One more time. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's lovely. I just love the Bible. Blessed be the God. Okay, so Jesus has God. Ah. He's the God of Jesus, and he's the Father of Jesus. That's what I was going to mention this morning in the main service. When it comes to Jesus' humanity, God is his God. When it comes to his, his divinity, God is his Father. Because when he said, I and the Father are one, they said, you are making yourself equal with God. By saying that God is your Father, you are making yourself God. John chapter, chapter 5, verse 9, 17 and 19. By saying God is your Father, you are saying that you are God. So when Jesus, when they said the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are talking about his deity. But when they said the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are talking about his humanity. Wow. Jesus Christ had humanity and he had deity. He was a real human being, 100% human being, and yet he was real God, 100% God. Two natures, one person. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that statement, when he said, I do not cease to make mention of you in my... Uh, 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 give thanks and uh, making mention of you in my prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ wow our Lord Jesus Christ the God so Jesus is God but he's saying he's God <laughs> he, Jesus is God why is he saying Jesus is God because human beings are not gods so so long as his humanity that's why he was born now Mary was the mother of the human being not a mother of God, excuse me. How can God have a mother? How can God have a mother? Human beings have mothers. God does not have mother because he doesn't have origin. He is the origin of everything. But to be a human being, you got to have a mother. Yeah. We can afford in divine programming for you not to have a father. That's why it's easier not to know your father than to not to know your mother. It's easier. Your mother, your father might not be in your life, but your mother is in your life. It's quite... So Jesus Christ could come without an earthly father because he was the heavenly seed. If he had had an earthly father, he couldn't have been God at the same time, man. So he didn't have an earthly father because, excuse me my language, the spirit that impregnated Mary was not a human sperm. It was a divine seed. So it's not the sperm that you know. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to go further. That one. No. No, that is different. The sperm that impregnated Mary didn't come through semen. So when we say Mary got pregnant and you mean God, God does not have semen. God forbid. But he has word. So they sent, that's why he had to send an angel to send the word. As soon as the angel spoke to Mary, and Mary said, be it unto me, she embraced the word. The word became the. Yeah, Luke chapter one. The word just, phew. it's the same thing that gave Abraham marriage, Isaac. Because Abraham's body was dead. Sarah's womb was dead. They couldn't have had a child. But the word that they received, the word entered Abraham's body and became, passed through his dead body and energized his dead body, and the word passed through it. And as soon as he hit Mary's womb, he gave life. God who gives life to the dead. 
For your formation, Romans chapter 4, verse 17. God who gives life to the dead. Yeah. God who gives, who giveth, gives life to the dead. So when the seed of God's word, which does not flow through semen, but it flows through message. So as I'm, I'm speaking, message that is coming is equal, watch this, is the same as semen in the natural. Because well, see, there are a lot of people who have cement but low sperm count. Some pastors and some people can have a lot of preaching and talking, but it's low in God's, God's word and God's seed. Wow. 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 Now that I've gone to the word, it's different. I'm down. That this will be very high in, excuse me, in sperm count. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you know, when we say sperm, sperm actually is actually seed. Sperma. The Greek word is sperma, which means seed. Seed, because so a man donates his seed to the woman, and the seed fertilizes the egg. That's how it works. So your life, your potential blessings and potential ministry and potential future is in the embryonic stage, like an egg. When the word of God comes, it's fertilized. Oh, I believe somebody's future has been fertilized. Somebody's future has been fertilized. So, it was the power of the word. Don't forget, it maketh the earth to bad. So shall my word be, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So shall my word be, that goeth out of my mouth. But the secret of what the word can do is in the verse 10. As the rain comes on the earth, it causes the earth, it maketh. As soon as the rain falls on the earth, the earth cannot remain the same. No, 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 no. It can, there's no way you introduce rain to the earth and the earth remains the same. Doesn't matter how dry, how stubborn the earth is. As soon as you introduce rain to it, it will cause the earth. It will, make, it will have an effect on the earth. He said, the same, he said, so shall my word be. The word goes out of my mouth. It doesn't return unto me void. So, in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, it said, the seed is the word of God. Yeah. The seed, the seed, the sperm. Wow. So, preaching is equals to sending semen, spiritual semen. Yeah. That's why I get overly excited when I say, let's read it out loud. Yes. Because when we are reading it out loud, it's like 100% sperm count. Wow. It is better than any commentary any of us can make. We are taking the whole thing and just speaking it. And as you are speaking it, you are making yourself hear it. And the seed is just beginning to download into your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, from the day I heard about your faith and your love, I said not to Give thanks on your behalf of, to God for you. Make him mention of you. That, uh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, what should he do? That may will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Uh oh. As you are knowing him, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. People don't have, some people don't have the wisdom. Some people don't have the revelation in the knowledge of him. So they get up and say anything. They just make, run into conclusions. Oh, now this, I don't, I, I, I just, I don't, I just go to church once. Oh, now this, this, the Lord has been speaking. You don't have wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Many people say, many people's spiritual insight about Christ is religious tradition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Many people's religious tradition. If you grew up in a certain culture, if you grew up in Hindu culture, if you grew up in African traditional culture, if you grew up in uh, Aborigines, uh, uh, Australian culture, it depends, wherever you grew up, they have their form of superstition and religious system. So then when you become a Christian and we say this is spiritual, as long as you say this is spiritual, your, you see, your understanding of spirituality is what is projected over what we are saying. So you are likely to understand everything in the like, in the frame or scope of what you already know, your existing preconceived ideology about spirituality. Wow. And so that's why it takes a long time of teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching. And then some of the unhealthy mindsets are being dismantled without you realizing. So after a while, 
you gain an, a, a great understanding in the things of God, which you never knew. That is why when you get born again, humble yourself. It doesn't matter how passionate you are or how gifted you are. Humble yourself. Sit down and listen to teachings. Receive teachings. Get yourself trained and groomed in the Word. You are running off to Bible school. Stay in church and allow yourself to be groomed in the Word of God. So, I do not cease to pray for you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant you. It's a grant. Okay. Hallelujah. May give unto, uh, it says that our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. One translation uses grant. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Give me New King James. That Father of our Lord Jesus may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Him, the Him. As you are knowing Jesus, you have revelation. You have revelation. Someone comes to tell you, "Oh, Jesus Christ, they didn't really die. You know, He was black." You just look at Him and you laugh at their level of ignorance, because you have revelation. You are operating in a different pla- on a different platform. What the the uh, gibberish? What the nonsense they are talking about? You might not say because it's just not it's, it's just not polite. So out of respect, you won't say anything. But in your head, you are feeling this guy is so ignorant. Because the level of junk, especially those people who believe they know about Christ, and they are so ignorant. They don't know. See, but sometimes if you're not careful, you begin to get convinced because you don't have a revelation in the knowledge of Him. So as soon as you realize that you are getting serious with this Christian life, how do you know somebody is getting serious in their Christian life? By their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and their love towards the saints. Your love towards the saints and your faith in Jesus is what tells me you are doing well in the Christian life. So as soon as I see you begin to do well, the next thing is you have to believe God. It's a prayer topic. It's a prayer topic first before a teaching subject. It's a prayer topic that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. And, and sorry, and, and, and wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Yes. That the eyes of your understanding. What? Yes. The, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Wow. You understand differently. Yes. When what people are talking. So that's why sometimes when I meet people who say uh, we are also Christians and they are talking, and I, uh, I feel so sorry for them. Because my level of understanding about this Christ thing is so far advanced that this, this rubbish, this pastor, this rubbish, this vicar, this rubbish, this so-called Christian leader, this rubbish, this other, it's, it's very worrying. But out of courtesy, you don't say anything. You just smile and say, oh my goodness. My goodness. One day I heard a certain bishop of one of the churches being interviewed, I think, on BBC. He said, the, the essence of Christianity, everything about Christianity, the reason why Christ came, came is just so you can love your neighbor. Hey. That's what it is. Wow. It's about just love. It's about love. It's about love. So when someone is hungry, you have to help them. It's about love. So look, look, look. look. Yeah. That, that's all. When you see someone keeping talking, this whole thing is about love. This whole, they haven't gotten the picture properly. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of love are you talking about in the first place? Are you talking about love for God or love for Mother, mother, uh, mother Nature. Mm. Wow. <laughs> they go as far as saying that if you are not doing certain things in society, you are not a good Christian. Many people who call themselves Christians lack revelation. Their eyes are not enlightened. Yeah. So he said, I'm praying for you that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Why do I need all that? Other than that, you are not qualified to know. You cannot know. There are some things that can only be known after your eyes, the eyes of your understanding has been cleared. Has been cleared. It's like when you buy a new bag. Yeah. When you buy a new bag, sometimes some of the bags, especially things like the metal bits, they'll be. Uh, wrap, it's wrapped nicely. Yeah. And some of it is uh, 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 iPhone, good, the phone. Yeah. When you buy it, there's the yeah, plastic, f- yeah. is it? Yeah. 
It's like clean film. It's there. And you have to, some of you don't want to take it off. <laughs> you have to take it off. Some, many people, even though they are born again, in their spirit, there's a film on their eyes. So they can, that's why you can't use your iPhone properly. You are punching and it's not responding to your fingers because there's a film on it. And you can't even read properly. You can't read properly. Take off the film. So he said, I'm praying that God will give you the wisdom, uh, the spiritual wisdom and revelation in the knowledge that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. It's not that your eyes are open. You don't, you know, not, it's open, but it's not enlightened. It's, there's a film covering it. There's a, there's a film. So it's a prayer topic. It's a prayer topic. Before it becomes a teaching subject, it's a prayer topic. You are growing in the Lord by virtue of the faith you have in Jesus and the love you have for the saints, but we need to take you further by praying that this thing will be removed from your eyes. You know some of the things when you are taking it off, you can feel, especially some new gadgets or something, you have to pull it and you can feel it's coming. Some of you, as I'm teaching, I see the Holy Spirit is pulling some things off. No, do, I, do I need to serve in church to be a Christian? You need. <laughs> Your own, it looks like Satan has, add, add, has added adhesive. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's get back to the text. Are you learning something from I, You see, the Bible is so sweet, yeah? Especially when your eyes are being enlightened. Yeah. Now I pray that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that we will know. Know what? The hope of, your, of his calling, not your calling, his calling. Those things, it's not just because of how much you've read the Bible. It's, it's a function of how much enlightenment that grant, the Spirit of God has granted you. That you will know the hope of your, his calling. The hope. Listen, there's no Christian without hope. That's why a Christian really, if you are, if you are on fire and you are in touch with God, you can't, you can't be dis- uh, discouraged for a long time. Discouragement might come, but it's short-lived. Yeah. Short-lived. You'll be fine. Yeah. Because there's always hope. Yeah. You can't be so discouraged to a stand where you want to take out, uh, take, uh, take out your life. No, no, no. Because there's hope. Tell somebody there's hope. <laughs> Today things might look very grim or very bleak. Oh, 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 don't worry. Somebody said, I don't know what the future holds, but I know he who holds the future. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the future holds. What will turn out in the future? But there's one thing I know. I know the one who holds the future. Yeah. So my future is secured. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason I brought you to this scripture is the third point there. So the first point, he said, I pray for you that the eyes of your, no, it's the second point. The first point, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you will know. Point one, that you will know. Why should the eyes of your understanding be enlightened? Number one, that we should know. Number two, that, watch this, that you will know what's the, uh, 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 and then number two, what are the riches of the glory of what? Of what? Let's already, let's start from the top. Let's go. The eyes of don't forget, this is 100% sperm count, yeah. seed count. So as you are reading it, you're actually in, injecting into yourself 100% seed without mixture. It's serious, directly from the Bible. Yeah. Never take it for granted when they say we should read it out mm-hmm. Let's go. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So, the second thing is, what are the riches of the glories, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Who are the saints? Us. Who is a saint? Us. What makes you a saint? What does it mean to be a saint? Ah. Uh, what does it mean to be a saint? You forgot it. Set aside for God's own. You are God's own. This one, like your mother, your father's meat. No, this one. Don't touch it. It's your father's. Yeah. In the house, you know, some things belong to dad. Yes. Yeah, you, don't, you don't touch it. Some things belong to moms. Sometimes they can be. Depends. But then, you, you know, you, you, your mom will allow you to go for that her Louis Vuitton bag. She saved a lot to buy it, or her wig, or something. You can use that makeup, but don't touch this one. This one is very expensive. This one is reserved for me. 
And I say, with dad. Many dads has a lot of things they don't share with anyone. Yes, 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 yes. That's what dads, especially their cars. Yes. yes. Yeah, their cars and some other stuff. God has reserved you and I separate saints. People who have been separated. Huh? God has separated these ones for himself. And the people, the saints, who is a saint? Good, that's what I want to hear. Who is a saint? The separated ones, the sanctified, that actually sanctified, saint. Okay. How do you call Holy Spirit in um, uh, Spanish? Spirit de Sante. How do you say it in French? Saint Esprit. Saint Esprit. Saint means sanctified, set as a holy. Okay, so all, they are all from the same rich way. So when we say someone is a saint, it means someone who has been sanctified. What does it mean to be sanctified? To be set apart. You have been put aside for God's own special pleasure. Yeah. What? Oh, wow. So God has set you aside. He looks at the world. Everything is created. He said, that's good. But anytime he wants pleasure, he just looks at you. Wow. And he brings him pleasure. He brings him pleasure. Thank I'll you, prove Jesus. it to you. Uh, Pastor, oh. how do you know? Ah, too many scriptures. But let me just give you one. Mm. In Ephesians chapter 1. He said, accepted in a beloved for six, seven, eight. He said, to the praise of his glory, to whom he, uh, he made us accepted in the beloved. And Christ, go to verse seven, Christ, whose blood. And in him we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the rich of God. Let's go to the next one. I will show you something. Which, has made, uh, which he has made to abound to us in all his own. Verse nine, it's seven there. Having made known to us the mystery of his glory, according to his good pleasure. Some translations say, according to the pleasure of his good will. According to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. It is his pleasure. Go to the next verse. Which is purposed in him, himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together all in one all things in Christ, both in heaven and earth. Verse, uh, 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 in whom we have, been, we have obtained, do you see that word? You see where I'm coming? Yeah. We have returned, uh, 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 being predestined according to what? The purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Everything is working is based on that. And we have obtained an inheritance. The, in the verse 8, it talks, I think one of the translations is according to the uh, pleasure of his good will. Is it verse 8? Yeah, verse, verse 9, he said, he made us know the mystery of it, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed. So he said, when he, he looks at us, it brings him joy. He has set us aside for his pleasure. He has set us aside for his pleasure. Every time, let's say in human terms, when you want to relax, there are some things you want to watch. So maybe you want to watch football or tennis or what? Maybe a movie or one every minute, something like that. Yeah. I'm born in every minute. Yeah, those things. People have different things they watch just to chill out or chillax. So they tune in. In the same way, God has just separated us, put us aside according to the pleasure of his good will. When he looks at us, he's happy. And not just that, he has set us aside and given us an inheritance. But the problem is this. If you don't know you have an inheritance, yeah. you will sell your future cheap. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You said you are in church, but you don't know what is working for you. Because you think your background is still the same as the everybody in your family. No. Once you are in Christ, you have been plugged and the key word here is, is integrated or engrafted into a different tree with a different root system. And so the, the nutrients that are being fed into your branch is from this particular tree, which is called Christ. Christ said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Okay? John chapter 15, verse 1. He said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. So we are branches in Christ. As soon as you get born again, God introduces you into a new spine or a new main stem. So even though you have your natural stem, when you become born again, you have this stem that gives you access to a certain inheritance that only belongs to the saints. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? So now it says that 
Uh, the Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, we just read it. Let me show you that again. Ephesians 1, 11, we'll go back to there. In him, we have obtained what? An inheritance. An inheritance. When you are in Christ, you have actually obtained a certain inheritance. Wow. But the problem is, I don't know what you are thinking about. Pastor, what is the inheritance? That's why in the verse 17, he said, I pray for you that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you will know the hope of his calling. Then number two, you will know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. If you don't know, you sell your, sell your future cheap. If you don't know it, you will begin to compromise your spiritual work for a guy. Wow. So, that he's saying that we have to know the inheritance. It's a prayer topic mm. that you will know. If you don't know your inheritance in Christ, Satan will lie to you wow. and tell you that you are good for nothing. Satan will lie to you that you have no future. He will lie to you, look at your mother, look at your father. He will be lying to you constantly. That's why no one stays in your life. Nothing good stays in your life. He will be lying to you, but he doesn't know. He will be lying to you based on your natural inheritance. But when you become a saint, you have saying uh, you have inheritance which is rich in glory. What is glory? Glory is something that is amazing. Everybody would love to clap for. So maybe when you, on, a, on a wedding day, mo- almost all brides look glorious. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Rich. They are rich in glory. When you see a bride, sometimes you, even sometimes the bridal a bridesmaids. Yeah. The other time we saw someone we said, ah, who is that? Yeah. This is the same girl. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> He says that, that you will know what are the riches of what? The glory, not the inheritance. The inheritance, we know we have it. But the quality of glory in the inheritance. Wow. Is there. Wow. What are the riches of the glory of in, the, his glory in the saints is rich in glory. Wow. Rich in glory. The glory, the, that means that you have such a glorious future. Yes. Mm. A glorious future in Christ. Nothing, nothing can ever compare to it. But if you don't know it, after I say I've been in church and I'm not getting anything, I've been in church, nothing is working. I mean, so you sell your future cheap. You settle for something less. Some of you guys, your future is so beautiful. Yes, your future is so beautiful. I'm telling you, the realms that God's grace that I walk now, nobody in my family has ever walked. So, my, it's not my family inheritance, but it's my spiritual inheritance. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's my spiritual, spiritual inheritance. Yeah, that's right. If you serve God, you are servicing your future. Yeah. Wow. You are servicing your future. Yes. You are servicing your future. Male or female, it doesn't matter whether you are male or female. Yeah. Your future is glorious in God. Amen. And that's what he said. If I don't pray for you, your eyes will not be enlightened, mm. and you won't know. And so you will end up selling your future cheap, mm. settling for something like Esau. He said, give me the food. I need it today. Today. I need this girl today. I need this guy today. Give it to me what you are talking about future. Okay, this, this girl is the finest thing I've ever seen. This boy is the finest thing that's ever come into my life. There's no way. Even my mother likes him so much. Yeah. My mother has been always asking of him, let him come and eat. Mm. Such a guy. I have to do outreach and say, let you go. <laughs> because he said he doesn't do church. No, no, it doesn't matter. I will do church with him. Mm. If he doesn't come, I will do my own and then we come. I love this guy. I, Pastor, sorry, I can't help it. I love this guy so much. You are like Esau. Wow. Esau. He said, don't be like profane Esau. Mm. For a morsel of bread. Mm. Yeah. So this future. Yeah, but it's Hebrews chapter 12, rather. Yeah, chapter 12. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Just one, one night stand. Oh. Oh. One, one morsel, one food, one oh. morsel of food. McDonald's, they, bought, they took you to Hakasan, that's all. Mm. That's all. You have sold your future. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes somebody will come to you, he owns a private jet. You can sell your future. Oh, she, she, she's a very nice lady. She has won Miss Well before. So you think, ah, you sold your future. So it doesn't matter where you stand. Anything that you feel this is best, if you compromise Christ for that one, you have sold your future. He said you are a profane person. Please, please, put it back. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. Profane person here is trivializes greatness. 
So, so that you not be a fornicator or a profane person, he says that I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that God will give you the wisdom of re- the spirit of wisdom, revelation, the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You will know the hope of His calling, and then you also know the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the same. And the third thing you will know is that you will know the power, Amen. the greatness of His power, the, the greatness of His power towards those who believe. It's not towards everybody. It's those who believe who can enjoy that. It's in your Bible. This is a prayer topic. Wow. Prayer topic. The exceeding greatness of his power towards those who believe according to the workings of his mighty power which he exerted on Christ when he raised him from the dead. He said that same power is available for you. When he raised him, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above principalities and powers and dominions in heaven. So the, this one is a function and a, 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 a function of power. He said that same power is working towards you, but you don't know. So I'm praying that you will know. Amen. Shout hallelujah. 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 I love KP2. Even if you don't want to be blessed, it's too late. Once you are in this atmosphere, yeah. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your future is secure. Your ministry is preserved. Your greatness is preserved. You shall overcome. Where you used to fail, this time you will not fail. Any area of weakness in your life, you are emerging very strong. I see you overcoming. I see you rising. I see you getting stronger and stronger. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. To your vomit. You will never go back to your vomit. You shall not go back to your vomit. You shall not go back to your vomit. You will not backslide. You will not fall off. You will not be detached. You will not be like an Esau. But you will be like a Jacob. You will do well. Shall it be? Amen. So shall it be. Amen. I see heaven advancing you. I see heaven helping you. I see heaven favoring you. I see heaven accelerating your greatness. You shall be great. You shall be lifted. It shall be well with you. I don't care what you have been through. I don't care what has happened in your past. God bless you for listening to the amazing message. We pray your life can never be the same. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube and listen to more messages from David Entry on all relevant streaming platforms. You can also connect with David Entry and our youth ministry at Caris Phase 2 on Instagram and TikTok and at Caris on Campus on Snapchat so you're always up to date. Be blessed.